Video games have always been married to space. Before anything remotely resembling a video game was widely available, there was Space War in 1962. At the time, it was the best game since Tennis for Two. Then a decade and a half later, when arcades started popping up, there was all kinds of space shit. Space Invaders, Asteroids, Galaga, Defender, there was a whole lot. I guess the weird magical blips and beeps of early video games, as well as the idea of video games as a revolutionary technological advancement, just lent itself very well to a space theme. Naturally, space games continued to pop up into the Sega vs Nintendo era, the video game equivalent of the Cold War. I will always love Nintendo. If I made a top 100 list of my favorite video games, more than half of them would be Nintendo games, but holy shit, these motherfuckers do not know how to make commercials. Big stylish and now one of the best values in America. Just for a limited time, buy the Super NES Super Set and get five complete Mario games standard. Mario. What is this shit? It looks like an ad for a fucking mattress store. Just replace the giant Super Nintendo in the background with a king size bed and tell me I'm wrong. Then you got Sega. 16-bit arcade graphics. You can't do this on Nintendo. Genesis does. 16-bit sports action. You can't do this on Nintendo. Genesis does. Genesis does. Genesis does. Genesis does. Genesis does. Get Joe Montana free, Pat Riley free, Buster Douglas free, Super Monaco GP free, or Collins free. What Nintendo don't. Nintendo don't. I still like that. Nintendo's marketing really wasn't any match for Sega's. If I were to guess, the only way Nintendo was able to stay competitive with Sega was purely on the merit and integrity of their games. Nevertheless, Sega was constantly boasting that the Genesis had blast processing, not to mention all these fuck shit add-on consoles. Alright, babe. With all these technical leaps happening on the Genesis, Nintendo needed to prove that Nintendo does. And there was one Super Nintendo game that proved to everyone that Nintendo did. And that game was, well, Donkey Kong Country. But Star Fox was pretty cool too. Ah yes, Star Fox. Because it always comes back to space, doesn't it? Star Fox was made using something called the Super Effects chip, which was supposedly also codenamed Mario. This chip would be added to the game cartridge, and in cooperation with the Super Nintendo's own hardware, was capable of producing some pretty powerful results. Of course, it all looks crap now, but that's not important. The important thing is Star Fox. Star Fox is one of Nintendo's greatest IPs. It's a team of anthropomorphic animals flying through space and blowing shit up to take down an evil monkey head mad scientist who is trying to conquer the galaxy. So everyone at Nintendo is on acid. I have a weird feeling that Conan O'Brien thinks he's the first person to come up with that joke. That's kind of sad. But I think the best thing to do is just be nice to him and let him have this one. I know it's wrong, but you know, I just... It's, I don't think he has any friends. Star Fox starts out with an amazingly ominous opening screen. Now that's how you establish atmosphere. The game has four different button layouts, which is cool, but I have to wonder, if they would go to the trouble to create four button layouts, why didn't they just say fuck it and let you map the buttons individually? The game lets you choose between three different routes, each starting at Corneria and ending at Venom, with three different levels in between. Corneria and Venom actually have different layouts depending on which route you decide to take. Now that's cool. Basically the game is a rail shooter where you fly around in 3D space and shoot polygons. Now objectively this game has aged, but surprisingly it hasn't aged as bad as I thought it would've. The controls are actually halfway decent. The movement is a bit sluggish, which is not helped by the inconsistent frame rate, but other than that, they're much better than I would have expected. I honestly thought the game would be unplayable. In spite of being technically dated, it's surprisingly fun. The music's great, the sound effects are awesome, and it's just fun to shoot shit. It's actually a good game. Now naturally, a good game must get a sequel. And that brings us to Star Fox 2. Now if you've never heard of this game, that's because it technically didn't exist until recently. A full version of the game was completed in 1996, but never released. Supposedly, this was because Nintendo didn't want to distract from the upcoming release of the Nintendo 64 with another 3D Super Nintendo game. I gotta say, that sounds like a lot of work for nothing. But later, a fully complete ROM of the game was leaked onto the internet, which can be played in its entirety on an emulator. Later still, Nintendo decided to release it on the SNES Classic. 
It only took him 21 years. Star Fox 2 is surprisingly much better than the original. It uses an upgraded version of the Super FX chip, which allows the game to look better without sacrificing the frame rate anymore. The gameplay is largely the same, except for three things. One, many of the levels feature an all-range mode, meaning instead of being forced along a path like a rail shooter, you can fly around the enclosed space looking for targets and objectives. Two, the R-Wing can transform into a land vehicle with legs, enabling it to travel on land, which is pretty cool. Finally, instead of choosing a direct path to Venom, you can actually fly between regions. But while you do so, missiles and attack carriers advance on Corneria. This adds a whole new level of gameplay. It also enhances replayability as you can choose different tactics each time you play. The game introduces some new characters like two new members of the Star Fox team and Star Wolf, Star Fox's rival. I'm tempted to say the controls are better than the original, but I'm not sure that's true. Everything else is better though, so it wouldn't be a stretch. Honestly, it's kind of sad that this game took so long to come out. I think it would definitely have been a defining title for the Super Nintendo. Even if it was on its way out, it'd be nice if it went down fighting. As great as both of these games are, they were basically tech demos for the Super FX chip. Of course, if Pikmin has taught me anything, it's that tech demos can be fun too, and these games reinforce that. Enter the new generation, though. Advances in technology have made 3D gaming much more feasible. As this happened, Nintendo made prototypes for Star Fox 3, 4, and 5, all the way up to 63, and never released any of them, until they finally released Star Fox 64. Star Fox 64 starts out with this amazing voiceover explaining the events leading up to the current conflict in the Lilat system. Five years later, General Pepper noticed strange activity coming from Venom. James McCloud, Pigma Dangar, and Peppy Hare of the Star Fox team were sent to investigate. Star Fox 64 has you start out on Corneria. Now instead of choosing a predetermined route to Venom, the route you take actually depends on your action in the current level. There are two different endings to this game depending on which route you take to Venom. The concept of your route changing depending on your success or lack thereof is awesome. It means you have a few chances to change the route to Venom, and it bolsters replayability because you can choose a different route each time and see what happens. Sometimes, depending on which route you take, future levels in the route will actually change. If you go to Katina, you meet Bill, and he reappears on the next level. That's cool. On a technical level, this is an exponential improvement over the old Super Effects technology. The graphics are great and the frame rate is solid for the most part. The sound design is top notch. Every sound effect is just so powerful and impactful, it just blows you away. And the game has voice acting. We need your help, Star Fox! Ah, something you cloud. Gee, quit moving around! Gotcha, you little snake! Do a barrel roll! Watch where you're flying! Get out of my way! I love how much personality there is to the voices. I especially love Area 6, where as you blast through the Venomian Armada, and as you get further, the guys leading the attack start freaking the fuck out. Do you copy? Emergency maneuvers! Did we get them? Not yet, sir! They broke through the first line! They're through the second line! Fire! Fire! Don't let them go! The last line has been breached! These guys are crazy! When you meet Bill on Katina, you get this. Fuck, you made it! Bill! Is that you? I can't believe it! We can catch up later, fuck. Now just to recap, this is the first time Bill has ever been acknowledged in any capacity, and from this 10 second exchange, we already know so much about him. His entire history with respect to Fox is written all over these 5 sentences. Today, video games do almost all of their exposition with graphically intensive cutscenes. These are great and all, except that it means that nuanced approaches to exposition like the exchange between Fox and Bill are no longer very common. This ability to tell much of the story through gameplay seems to be kind of a neglected art. It does still happen today, but not as much. It gives the impression that doing storytelling this way is considered solely a compromise made for inferior technology, which is just sad because it's actually a really cool way of doing things. Speaking of gameplay, Star Fox 64 is pretty much a perfect game on its own terms, with the exception of the water level. The controls are insanely precise, the mechanics are extremely consistent and fully functional. The game is just non-stop fun. 
it's second to second action. You shoot down an enemy and you're just thinking about the next one you're gonna shoot down and then the one after that. Besides Aquas, Star Fox 64 pretty much is a perfect game. It's so perfect that it's the one literally everybody remembers. Because of the incredible action and the memorable characters, this game is just an absolute masterpiece. Now, when you have such a perfect game, there are two ways to make a sequel. You can either make the same kind of game with all the good aspects of it further improved upon, or you can do this, or this, or this, or this. It all started when Rareware was making a game called Dinosaur Planet, an adventure game for the N64, which was nearing the end of its life cycle at the time. I gotta say, for the N64, these graphics are quite impressive, but Miyamoto noticed that the main character was a fox, or at least resembled a fox. He basically said, okay, your fox is shit, but we have Fox McCloud and he's super cool and stuff. Use him instead, nerds. And Dinosaur Planet was reworked to use the Star Fox license. I gotta say, for a visionary game maker with countless revolutionary titles to his name, he sure has a lot of really bad ideas. That's like if Retro Studios was making a game about Nazis and Miyamoto's all like, well, Link's blonde with blue eyes, just make him a Nazi. We'll call it Legend of Zelda, Triforce of the Will. Yeah, you pretty much nailed it. Star Fox Adventures is an adventure game that's actually quite reminiscent of Zelda. It starts out with Crystal, a blue fox with breasts. So many possibilities as to where they're going with this. So the first thing you'll notice is that the graphics are actually quite beautiful. Considering this is an early GameCube title, it's stellar. But after that, you start to notice that the controls are basically just a shitty take on Zelda controls. In fact, in its simplest terms, Star Fox Adventures is a weird Zelda knockoff. But since it's still overseen by Nintendo and uses Nintendo characters, you can't really call it a ripoff. I mean, it's not like you can steal your own ideas from yourself, right? But hey, look! You get the thing and he holds it up, just like Zelda. You lift up rocks for money, just like Zelda. Switch puzzle, just like Zelda. Lock puzzle, like Zelda. Falling down holes. You fucking get it, it's Zelda. But even then, there are some new ideas here, like, uh, Tricky. I, I can't understand you. Yeah, the story is that the aptly named Dinosaur Planet is blowing up because of some magical power or something. It's Fox's job to go to the surface and try to figure this shit out and find a way to fix it. Otherwise, the rogue chunks of rock could threaten the rest of the Lilat system. Now, the game is actually not irredeemable. I already mentioned that the graphics are great, and the gameplay to a certain degree is kind of solid, I guess, especially considering it's not even close to a Star Fox game. The exploration is kind of neat, the worlds are pretty cool, but as often as this game is compared to Zelda, it just doesn't have that level of refinement to it. There's a level of tweaking and fine-tuning that you find in the Zeldas that's just not present here. Now, just so they could legally call it a Star Fox game, whenever you have to travel between parts of the planet, you get to fly the R-Wing on a one-minute level. Now, I wish I could say that this is consolation for this being a fake-ass Star Fox game, but it just feels so forced and shitty. It was clearly put in as an afterthought. It's not even half as good as Star Fox 64. Fuck, it's not even as good as the Super NES games. The cutscenes are some of the most atrocious shit you'll see. They make Super Mario Sunshine's cutscenes look like fucking MGS4. Uh, well, can you help us? <laughs> help you? No. But you're a warp stone. You're supposed to help. <laughs> That's stupid. Now, this game has a lot of dumb shit. A lot of it's forgivable, but what I can't forgive is General Pepper. They fucked him up so bad. General Pepper here! Great flying, Fox! For a moment, I thought you weren't gonna make it! Very funny, sir. I know! Fuck you! Now, on to business! It's always the same with you, Fox. Shoot first, ask questions later. This mission is about saving the planet, not blowing it up. It requires a different tactic. Try using your head. <laughs> Fuck you! This man is a general of the fucking Cornarian army. Why does he talk like he's the fucking porter from Macbeth? That is, Shakespeare's Macbeth, not the planet from Star Fox. This whole thing is just a profound molestation of the source material. It's a fairly good game on its own terms, but the use of the Star Fox license is just so damn misguided. 
You know, it's funny. Many people say this game ruined Star Fox, while at the same time, some people suggest that Nintendo sold Rare because they started becoming displeased with the company. I almost wonder if this game was partly responsible for that displeasure. When Rare was sold to Microsoft, they started becoming a terrible company. So, in a way, Rare ruined Star Fox, and Star Fox ruined Rare. Now that's a real fucky lesson in karma. Also, Falco is completely absent for 99% of the game. Like, he's not even acknowledged. I guess they figured he was way too cool for this lame-ass dinosaur game. Fortunately, he returns for the next game. Three years after Star Fox Adventures was released, they made Star Fox Assault. This game was intended as a return to form for the franchise, and for the most part it was. Now, is it a worthy successor to Star Fox 64? Fuck no. But is it a good game? Actually, yeah, it is. The graphics are spectacular. The music is fucking amazing. As a game, it's fun, and certainly refreshing to see, considering the last real Star Fox game came out eight years before this one. It's not quite as fun as Star Fox 64. The R-Wing sections are pretty cool, but the controls feel a bit too floaty. They're not quite as precise as Star Fox 64, which is a bit sad. But they added in some new features, like those sections where you can walk around on foot and shoot shit. That's pretty cool. The controls on foot can be a bit janky and difficult to get used to, but once you do, it's pretty impressive. Even though the game is not quite as enjoyable as Star Fox 64, when you blast through your enemies with that fucking amazing soundtrack hyping up in the background, this game is magical. But I have some complaints. The sound is a little fucked up. For some reason, all the dialogue sounds like it was recorded inside of an outhouse. Yep, as good as ever, Fox. Enemy ship down! Looks like the other devices are in a higher area. There must be an elevator. Find it. Just spotted a new enemy battleship. I'm off to ambush it. I was originally gonna go find an outhouse to show you what it sounds like, but instead, you'll just have to imagine me bringing my laptop and microphone into an outhouse while some pissed off construction workers yell at me from the outside. The sound effects so seem to be similarly affected. The story for Star Fox Assault starts with the Star Fox team hunting down Andrew Oikini, a former member of the Star Wolf team and nephew of the late Andros. Seems simple enough until they actually take him down, at which point you're greeted by what's called an aperoid. Aperoid, 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 aperoid? It turns out that aperoids are a species of hyper intelligent space insects that decimated an entire Cornarian fleet decades ago, who are coordinating to take over the Lilat system. Members of Star Fox, a grave danger looms. The Lilat system is in peril. What? How do you know? We know. Nice to see General Pepper is still an asshole. Who the fuck answers a question like that? Now, this game does get very fan y at times. The battle with Andrew is basically a take on the Andros battle from Star Fox 64. There's that part where they go to Saria, which is Dinosaur Planet. A mission together at last. Oh, uh, yeah. And Fox and Crystal go to the surface where they meet Tricky, who's all grown up. Fox! Tricky! Fox! Crystal! I knew you'd come! Thank you so much! Tricky! So heavy! Ouch! <laughs> yeah! I'll take care of things here, so you two can come back on your honeymoon! What? What are you, nuts? We aren't- we're not yet, uh... Not yet? Uh... I mean... I mean, this isn't a conversation for children! You said you weren't gonna treat me like a kid anymore! 
Then stop acting like one. Then there's that part where Wolf swoops in and saves Fox, and he acts all edgy and mysterious. I owe you my life on that one, Wolf. Thanks. I thought I told you. I didn't come here to save you. Fox, let me give you one piece of advice. Don't hesitate. When the time comes, just act. Wolf. There's that part where General Pepper is infected by the Aperoids and he selflessly orders you to kill him. I'm sorry. I'm powerless. Shoot. Shoot me. And then Peppy swoops in and breaks his fall with his R-Wing. I almost wonder if Nintendo felt so bad about Star Fox Adventures that they included all this fan service as an apology letter. But for such a fan service video game, how did they fuck up this? Never give up. Trust your senses. Are you fucking kidding me? This is like in Metal Gear if Grey Fox was all like, Snake, we're not tools of the government or anyone else. We're actually a shoebox full of kittens. Remember how I mentioned Star Fox 64 had that awesome nuanced storytelling? Well, Star Fox Assault has cutscenes all the time. There's like three cutscenes per level, which means that the Star Fox 64 approach isn't really used. Remember my E3 video where I talked about how Wolfenstein kept breaking up the action too much? Star Fox Assault most definitely has this problem. Mostly due to the cutscenes, but occasionally, navigation on foot can aggravate this further. In any case, even if it's not quite as good as Star Fox 64, it's a great game and definitely a welcome addition after adventures. Now, when you have a good game, there are two ways to make a sequel. You can either make the same kind of game, with all the good parts further improved upon, or you can do this, or this, or this, or this. Even if it's closer to a traditional Star Fox game than Adventures, Star Fox Command is the one that frustrates me the most, and that is simply because this game is so close to being a normal Star Fox game, but they added in these stupid invasive gameplay elements. Remember how in Star Fox 2 you had that map that you could explore freely to intercept missiles and attack battle carriers? Well imagine that, except you have to do it turn by turn, and you can only go a limited distance per turn, lest you run out of fuel, because apparently this is a fucking board game. I said that Assault likes to break up the action with its cutscenes too much, but in this game, breaking up the action is a core game mechanic. Genius! Also, haven't you always dreamed of playing a Star Fox game where you can run out of fuel? How about running out of fuel in the middle of an actual level and losing your fucking life? Beautiful, I love this. Also, the game has no voice acting, like the Super Nintendo games. That makes sense for Super Nintendo, but the Nintendo DS cartridges are supposed to be able to hold a gigabit of data, which is twice what an N64 cart can hold. If Star Fox 64 had voice acting, why not this? I'm sure there's a reason, but still, what the fuck? Another thing I hate about this game is the stylus controls. Now, yes, I am playing on an emulator, and I am using a mouse, so it's even worse. But I have played on original hardware, and it isn't that much better. In either case, they are tolerable, but it frustrates me that there's no option for the D-pad. I don't know for a fact that it would be better, and it is a bit iffy, considering D-pads aren't really great in 3D space, but I suspect that it is better. There does exist a mod for this game that lets you use a D-pad. I wish I found that out before I started recording. The story is that a race of fish people called the Anglar have risen from the toxic sea of Venom, and are invading the Lilat system. Also, Star Fox is broken up. Slippy is getting married, Fox kicked Crystal off the team for her own safety and she broke up with him, Falco started chasing odd jobs, and Peppy took over for General Pepper, who became ill. He's General Peppy now. I like that. Throughout the game, you actually meet some of these characters and enlist them for missions, which is pretty cool. Then you get to command where they go each turn and play as them when they get into conflict. This is all stuff that's actually pretty cool. 
Another cool thing that this game does is branching storylines. Sometimes you get a choice of where to go, and this results in one of nine endings. Only issue is that they're locked the first time around, so you're forced on a singular path and only have access to one ending. In this ending, the Star Fox team is reunited until Crystal decides to dump Fox and join Star Wolf. Wow, what a fucking bitch. Fox was forced to wander alone and unloved. Wait a minute. You're telling me that this guy who saved the galaxy three-ish times before this can't find another woman? Is Crystal the only female fox in the Lilat system? What a load of shit. In all honesty, this game is tolerable, maybe even halfway decent, but it's frustrating and has so much dumb shit working against it. This is Nintendo's problem, forcing innovation where it isn't necessarily warranted, and resulting in a weird, disappointing experience. I hate that I can call innovation a problem in this case, because innovation has historically driven the gaming industry to newer and greater heights. But Nintendo doesn't always see the line between innovating and getting completely sidetracked from what's been proven to work. Now, this game isn't the worst offender of this type, but it's certainly guilty. Star Fox is a very confused franchise. It's a good series that keeps getting caught in some kind of identity crisis. It looks like one thing one minute, then changes its shit, then changes back, then changes again. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem to have the versatility to shine in all of these forms. Neither Command nor Adventures are horrible games, but they take liberties that blur the line between bravery and stupidity. They're kind of like problematic family members. Loving them is a chore, but on some level, you know you do. The rest of the games, though, those are all great. Hopefully Nintendo will come to its senses and make another one of these. Wait. Hang on. Something's not right here. What'd I miss? Oh. No oh, shit. Who are you guys? We're Star Fox. Fox. I got a bad feeling about this Fox. It's quiet. Too quiet. What, 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 why are ships coming out of the base? Hold them! They're trying to get through! This is horrible. Is that the best you can do? Do?